The DJI Pocket 3 is an absolute outstanding camera and perfect for so many people out there. But don't rush out and buy one because there's been some frustrations and disappointments that I've had over the last six months of owning this camera. And a few of these reasons might be enough for you not to go buy one. So why did I buy the Pocket 3 in the first place? I wanted to get this camera mainly for vlogging. I wanted to start creating more content. And because of how small, lightweight and easy it is, because obviously you can fit it in your pocket, I wanted to use it for vlogs because it was a lot easier to carry around rather than my full frame R6 Mark II with at the time my Tamron 24 to 70 because it was the only wide angle lens that I had that was f2.8 so obviously I got that so I could start creating some more content and uploading more frequently to YouTube but it's not just vlogs it's also filming behind the scenes content for when I'm at weddings and I'm obviously using both my cameras to capture the day and I don't want it to be too big too bulky and whenever I want to quickly film something I grab it out turn it on and bang I've got a lovely brilliant 4K image and that is what I wanted it for and it does that absolutely perfectly. However, sometimes I am kind of wishing that I had a little bit more quality. I'm not saying that it's bad quality for how tiny this camera actually is. The quality on it is absolutely amazing and it still blows me away to this day. When I first used this, I was very shocked of how good this actually looked. So even though the image quality is stunning and I'm really loving that uh, shallow depth of field and I really do notice it a lot in my wedding videos when I put it behind my camera, and I either focus on the camera or on the subject behind, I'll get lovely separation and I'm really, really enjoying using it for behind the scenes content like that. However, there are a few times where I am wanting that extra bit of reach or extra little bit of quality that I see in a lot of other people's vlogs. So if you are looking to get it for something like that, or if you're literally just a YouTuber who's looking for their first camera, this is one of the best cameras to buy, especially when you are starting out because it's so easy, because it's so convenient. It just looks and sounds so good, especially if you get the creator combo, which we will be getting to a little bit later. But not only just for vlogs and behind the scenes content, I found another great purpose for this camera, and that is just my travel camera. When I first got this camera, I wanted to bring it with me on my next trip, and that was to Whitby. Me and my girlfriend, Amy, went there for Monday to Friday and we stayed in a lovely lodge and we just explored Whitby, kind of chilled out. And I brought my camera and my 24 to 70 and my 70 to 100. Towards the end of the trip, I actually left my camera and my lenses in the lodge, locked up obviously, because I literally just ended up whipping this out all the time over my other camera because like I said, it's so easy, it's so small, it's so convenient. It was just in my pocket. If I wanted to film my food, I just whip it out, flip the screen, turn it on and there you go. I can get a lovely 4K image with a gimbal so it's stabilize as well to get a, an amazing like the footage of the buildings the people whatever we're doing just some look at this footage it just looked absolutely amazing like especially when we went on this boat as well i literally again i think that was when i didn't even bring my other camera i just brought this next time when i took my trip last a couple weeks ago we went to clumber park in nottingham instead of bringing my normal camera which i'd always do and then i'd end up not wanting to leave it behind and bringing it with me and it ends up being really heavy and kind of awkward and i never actually use it anyway so i kind of regret bringing it i just bought my dji pocket free and it was absolutely perfect i forgot i even had it on me sometimes it doesn't add any weight it was just in my pocket and we went on a nice little bike ride around this lake i ended up just literally stopping whipping out this camera getting some nice videos getting some photos to make some memories on so literally this is the perfect travel camera and there is a mode on here where you can actually zoom in so if you are shooting in 4k you can get a nice tight shot but obviously the 4k shot turns into a 1080 shot which actually is still perfect but you just gotta be careful if you're filming in 2.7k or 1080p because because obviously if you zoom in then you're losing quality. Another great thing about the Pocket 3 and another reason why it's so good for travel is because if you're at a place like in England at the minute, it's now very, very dark at night. And recently, I actually, last week it was, I actually took this to the Birmingham Christmas Market. And on this camera, there is a low light mode. I don't actually know what it does, but you're limited to 4K 30 and you can't shoot in log, I don't think. I think it's some like AI stuff and it really goes hard on a noise reduction as well and then sharpness to bring some of that detail back and i actually think the footage looks very very nice for especially how dark it was now obviously being a christmas market there was some really nice lights out there so that did light up the place a little bit but for the stuff on me and just some of the detail stuff like it could look a lot worse and if i was using my phone or even my mirrorless camera because i'd have to up my iso this was just great to go around and again create memories that low light mode can really come in handy and it looks very very nice if you've liked all of the music in this video so far, then it's all from Audio. They have an amazing library of professional, amazing sounding songs. And if you use the link in the description below, then you can save 70% off your first year with code SAVE70. Recently, I went
went to a wedding and I done a full behind the scenes vlog on that day. I can get some nice behind the scenes content on the back of the camera to show what I'm doing for B-roll wise. This is actually quite annoying with it. It's got a USB-C at the bottom rather than a your traditional tripod like quarter 20 screw which can be annoying sometimes because you do have to make it this whole camera longer basically if you want to put it on a tripod or anything but what does make it nice is a quick release system so if I want to take it off that quickly I just hold in take it off and then I can literally film myself do a nice talking piece to camera and be really as natural as possible and just say what's on my mind at that time and I really do think the, the pocket free is perfect for that like I said earlier to get in behind the scenes content if you saw my video on filming Netflix style interviews on a low budget that whole video obviously apart from the talking head stuff was shot on the DJI pocket free if I didn't have this camera that video wouldn't have been made and that is one of the best videos in my opinion that I've made I'm so glad I filmed it because you could see what happened throughout the day of how crazy it was if you haven't seen it it was like so so windy and it was raining and you you really saw us like having to adapt and like improvise on set and it was really cool and like I said really authentic and really nice so that's why I love this for so many reasons now filming this video now it actually really does show how much I do love this camera and how I actually should use it more future Sam here literally right after I decided to film the review for the pocket free literally the next day I decided to do like a behind the scenes weekend in a life vlog and I've just stopped now. It's currently 25 past 12 in the morning because I've just spent the last two hours editing that vlog because I'm absolutely loving it so far. The Pocket Free is absolutely amazing for stuff like this and I can't believe how easy it is to use. I tried to use my R6 Mark II filming some of this vlog and it was just so awkward, I had to get a tripod out. This one I could just grab like I'm doing now, film it, put it in different places, bring it with me when I'm out. It's so easy and well, in my opinion, it's one of my favorite videos because like I said, it's so natural and authentic. It's just, I'm having a great time editing it and I'm, I should have, I was aiming to come go to bed an hour ago, but I just could not stop editing this video because of just, I'm really happy with how this vlog is. So yeah, just coming in here now, obviously everything that I've said is true, but now even after doing a whole vlog, I'm definitely gonna be using this more for vlogging in the future. So just thought I'd say that here because I felt like I needed to say how much I love this camera when I used it this weekend and I can't wait to use it more. So yeah, let's get back to the video and talk about the specs. Let's actually talk about the specs and the creator combo because that's the combo I brought and the creator combo in my opinion is absolutely 100% worth it. If you're going to buy a pocket free, spend the extra £150 and get the creator combo because you'll be missing out big time. You get a mini tripod for if you want to put it down because surprisingly that doesn't come with the normal kit. This is the, the protective case which is okay, it's nice but what I like about it is that you have your magnetic places for some of your filters so they're always with the camera even if you don't bring this which is what I really like. The battery extender so if it runs out of battery because that's one of the cons on the pocket free in my opinion is that the battery life isn't the best and there is no replaceable battery so you can't buy loads of batteries for it it's a built-in battery so the only way to charge it is to charge it through USB-C and this is basically it's like a portable charger battery and you just plug it in and then that this battery feeds the camera and that's how it gets the power and the only annoying thing about that is that it makes it very big especially if you want to put the tripod in it as well it kind of defeats the purpose of it being a pocket camera because it gets very very big so if you want to charge it up you put it on and it's already that big and if you want to put on the tripod as well that's how big the pocket free can get which yes this is not very pocketable anymore but if it means getting extra battery life and if you're just on the road traveling to the next port, you put this in and it can just charge it for a little bit and then there you go. Also on the creator combo, which I think is an absolute must have, is this magnetic 15 millimeter wide angle lens. Sometimes 20 millimeter is a little bit too tight. You put this on and you get more field of view and it's great. The biggest thing about the creator combo, which is absolute genius from whoever thought of this, is you get the DJI Mic 2. Now this mic is absolutely fantastic. It has internal 32-bit flow, but the best thing about this mic is that you do not need a transmitter, and that's because the DJI Pocket 3 has a built-in receiver, sorry, not a transmitter, 
into the camera so you don't have to plug anything into here because this is the receiver it automatically connects every time you turn this on as soon as you turn the mic on it connects up straight away and the audio is coming from here and you can also record a backup through this as well if someone else is filming you then you can sync it in post and then you've got two sets of audio if you've got another dji mic too you can put it on me and you can put it on someone else and you've both got really clean audio because you can connect to two mics at once if you're getting it to vlog if you're getting it to make videos why would you not want quality audio and it's literally right here in your palms if you get to create a combo and if you're wondering at the minute this is what the dji pocket sounds like with this mic and normally it would be placed here so this is what it would sound like realistically and this is what it looks like in this set and thinking about it now this looks amazing. This isn't even in log, this is in standard color profile. And what's also a great feature on the Pocket 3 is that it has automatic face tracking. So if I'm moving around like this, it automatically tracks my face every time I move around. You get a little bit of the behind the scenes here. You've got my lights and negative fill. But yeah, you see where I'm coming from. And this is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. Like I said, without the creator combo, you wouldn't be able to have this tripod. I can put this down here and then I can move around my room. And obviously I've got my, my mic here and it can just, yeah, this is what it sounds like. This is what it looks like. And I'm really impressed with, with how good this looks. Every time I use the Pocket 3, it really, really does just surprise me of how good it is and how authentic it is. Because if I just want to move around here, I've got the mic. I'm probably getting a bit too close here. I can just leave it here and I can just get on with whatever I want. That's what I love about the Pocket 3. And because it's got this face track on, it just makes it so easy for creators out there. So like I said, the Creator Combo is great, but the specs on this camera are amazing. So you've got 4K up to 120 frames per second. You get a uh, D-Log M, which is probably DJI's second best log out there. And the best thing I think about the Pocket 3 is that there is a setting to turn down the sharpness. Now, I always love to have minus two sharpness because I hate my videos being overly sharp because that's when it looks like iPhone territory. It gives it that natural look and by having the minor sharpness, you can also have noise reduction as well to get rid of some of the noise. If you want super, super slow-mo, you've got 240 frames per second in 1080p. The photos on this are great, you can shoot in RAW, and it can shoot panoramas, it can shoot time lapses. Like I mentioned, how you can keep your filters in the case, because this is the protective case with it. I have a variable ND filter. They're not stackable, which is really annoying, and I don't know why they've done that. Now, one thing that I really don't like about this camera, and I really think it's easily fixable the only aspect ratios you can film on this camera are 16 by 9 and 1 by 1 there's no 4 by 3 so you're basically limited to whether you want to shoot landscape or if you want to shoot vertical and it's just really really annoying i don't know why they haven't put a 4 by 3 mode in there if they didn't put it in and they had a great vertical mode like the mini 4 pro the gimbal rotates so it's pure native vertical shooting. If that did this, it wouldn't be as bad because you can either shoot pure horizontal or pure vertical natively because there's a lot of people out there who probably just shoot TikToks and YouTube shorts and they're buying this for that reason. It crops in on the sensor anyway and you can't even shoot 4K because it crops in. The maximum resolution is 3K, which is still fine for TikTok and YouTube shorts. Let's be real, it is perfectly fine, but you don't get the full width for the sensor. People who do shoot vertical only are really limited with this camera and it is really annoying and it's something I can see that they're going to just use and put in a pro version, a pocket free pro. Another thing about this, obviously I want to use it whenever I want and it's so easy to get out but it because of the build quality of this, I'm really scared sometimes to use it, especially obviously it does come with a strap which I haven't put on and I should have done. If you drop this, it's broken, done, you have to buy a new one unless you have the DJI Care refresh which I probably recommend you should do with this because this is so easy to break and it's not waterproof as well. So if it is raining outside, you can say goodbye to your vlog for that day because this isn't waterproof. And again, that's just an, one annoying thing about this camera because it's meant to be easy, it's meant to be convenient, it's meant to be quick. When I was at the wedding, I really thought it was gonna rain and if it rained, I wouldn't have had any video that day. Luckily it didn't and I have a full BTS video. So I've said some of my frustrations and disappointments like the four by three mode not being on here, like the build quality, and like sometimes I would like that extra little bit of quality sometimes. At the end of the day, for £650 for all of that, a few of them little features are fine to live with. So I would 100% recommend this camera to so many people out there, creators, people who want to vlog, people who 
just want family style videos, people who have never picked up a camera in their life and they just want something better than their iPhone. This camera is absolutely amazing. And if you do want to buy one, I highly recommend you use the link in the description below to purchase it. So thanks very much for watching. If you did enjoy, watch this video up here next and I'll see you guys on the next one. See you later.